الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us tawfiq and he gives us success and that he accepts everything that we put forth أذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى that he keeps us firm upon the surat al-mustaqim he corrects for us our mistakes and he makes us those people who return back to him him being pleased with us Upon La ilaha illallah, upon the people who have entered into Jannah. Uh, today is another session where we're looking at the book, Lumat al Itiqad, Sufficiency in Creed, or an Illumination in Creed, Al Hadi ila Sabeel al Rashad, by Muwafaq al Dini bin Qudama, Rahimahullah, with the explanation of Sheikh Muhammad al Uthaymin. And today's session, inshallah, we're going to look at Fasl al Iman, Qawlun wa Amr. And remember, these chapters have been put here by Sheikh Muhammad, it's not by the author. Today's topic we're going to be looking at, Iman, how it comprises of actions and statements. Now this is very important because from the deviant sects that exist within Islam and even outside of Islam, they say as long as you believe in something, you'll go to Jannah. You'll find this within Islam, you'll find this with outside of Islam as well. As long as you believe in particular creed, that is sufficient for you to attain Allah's mercy and His reward. There's another deviant sect which have said, as long as you do actions, not necessarily believe inside, as long as you do actions, you will go to Jannah. And this is because they have said, oh, you're going to have to forgive the language here, but they have said, this is wajib upon Allah to reward you with what you have done. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, certain rewards for certain actions. If you have done the action, even if you don't have Iman internally, according to this deviant belief, Kullabiyya, they have said, Allah has to reward you. And this is well known from the Mu'tazila because they say that there is wujub upon Allah, that there are obligations upon Allah. So what is the correct stance? The correct stance is that Iman consists of belief, he's saying here, Rahimahullah, Mufaqdeen, Wal Iman, قَوْلٌ بِاللِّسَانِ It's what you say with the tongue. This is Iman. So every tasbihah, this is Iman. Every tahmeed, this is Iman. Every takbir, this is Iman. Every tahleel, this is Iman. Every time you say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Every time you recite the Qur'an, any, time, any type of good statement that you do for the sake of Allah, this is Iman. وَعَمَلٌ بِالْأَرْكَانِ Iman consists of actions that you do with your limbs. So again, any good deed that you do with your limbs, this is Iman. وَأَقْدُمْ بِالْجَنَانِ And what you believe in internally in your heart. This is Iman. So your hope in Allah and your fear of Allah and your tawakkul in Allah and you having awe of Allah and you being reminded of Allah Anything that you do inside, all of that is Iman also. And this is the correct view, and this is the view of Ahlul Sunnah, which is Iman consists of actions, statements, and internal beliefs and actions as well. Now this is very important for us to understand because the Muslim Ummah is going through what it's going through, and some of them they say, well, leave me to Allah. Iman is in my heart. Allah will judge me. You tell them to fix up and start becoming more practicing, they say, inshallah. But they have no real intention. They think that their la ilaha illallah in their heart or what they say with their tongue is sufficient. This is not the case. The author is saying here, iman consists of statements and actions as well as the things that you believe in. Now, there are evidences, and it's not being discussed here, but there are evidences here to say that there is a bare minimum of statements and actions and beliefs that you need to have. And it could be that a person says something and he leaves the fall of Islam. لا تقولوا ثلاث انتهوا وخيرنا Don't say Trinity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said now saying an action has become what? Kufr. Leaving the salah is an action. Kufr. And a person having beliefs inside now obviously this is between the person and Allah that could also be kufr. So just as we have actions and statements and beliefs which are iman, it could be actions and statements and beliefs which are not iman and take a person outside the fall of Islam. 
And that's why this chapter is really important, because it is not sufficient for a person to think that he's got a label of being a Muslim, and you call him Muhammad or Abdullah, that he's going to go to Jannah. No, Iman can only be confirmed by these things that we have mentioned. Then he moves on to something which is also an issue in Aqidah. وَيَزِيلُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَيَنْقُصْ بِالْإِسْيَانِ It increases with good deeds, as uh, Sheikh Muhammad gives evidence from the Qur'an, uh, in Surah Al-Imran, at, uh, chapter number 3, ayah number 173, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes when the believers were tested, فَزَادَهُمْ imana. When they were tested, the iman actually increased. In Surah Fatih, ayah number 4, لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ They've already got iman, but Allah tested them on the day of Hudaybiyyah, so they increased in the iman with the iman that they already had. So what the author is saying here, the aqeel of Ahlul Sunnah, is that your iman can go up and it can go down. How does it go up? Yazidu bitta'ah. The more good you do, the stronger will be your iman. Now I'm sure this resonates with everyone. Every time you do a good deed, you feel good about yourself. You've recited some Qur'an, you've come to the, the masjid, you've given in sadaqah, or you've listened to a daras, and then you go home and you feel happy. What is that? That is your iman being increased. وَيَنْقُصْ بِالْعِسْيَانِ And again, I think everyone can relate to this. You've done something wrong. You've said something wrong. You've slipped up. And then you feel bad. You just feel bad about yourself. You feel uncomfortable with what has happened. What is that? That is your iman going down. Now this is what Ahl sunnah believe in. Your iman goes up the more you do good. And if you do slip, there could be a blip, but then your iman goes up again. This is how it is. It goes up and it goes down. It goes up when you do good. And it goes down if you did something wrong. Now this is again very important because it nullifies the idea that saying La ilaha illallah is sufficient. So you say to them, brother, you need to become more practicing. You're not praying. And the sister's not praying. She's not wearing hijab. Or she says, or he says, Iman is in my heart. This is between me and Allah. Not only does it contradict the first sentence, which is no, Iman are actions and statements as well, but it also contradicts this, which is that a person can go down so bad until there's no Iman left. A person can go down so bad in their Iman until there is no Iman left. So this statement of saying, you know, just leave me alone, Allah will judge me, or what is in my heart is what matters. No, this is, again, very important for us to understand the Aqeel of Ahl Sunnah. Otherwise, a person would not utter such, such statements. What's the evidence for this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Bayyina. Chapter number 99, ayah number 5. Wama umiru. They were not commanded. Who are they? Surah Al-Bayyina. Huh? What is it talking about? Ahlul Kitab. Now, this is very important. This is a benefit in tafsir here. Surah Al-Bayyina is a Madani surah. And it is only one of the few surahs which were revealed in Medina, in Medina uh, from Juz Amma. Most of Juz Amma is Makkan. And the reason why is because they are short surahs, and they are powerful, and they are concise, and they talk about Yawm Al-Akhir, and they talk about the oneness of Allah. But you've got some surahs, maybe one or two, Surah Iraja and Surah Bayina, which are Madani surahs, but they're short ones. Now here, this is a summary of what has happened before from people Kitab. A messenger came to them, a book came to them, and look what happened. So this is very important for us to understand within the context now of Aqeedah, because Tafsir, Aqeedah, Fiqh, all of it is related, which is that they spoiled their religion because they didn't do this. وَمَا أُمِرُوا They were only commanded إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They worship Allah, making the religion sincerely for Him, meaning having ikhlas in Him. Actions, statements and beliefs of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they left that. Hunafa being Hanif, upon the religion of Ibrahim, Tawheed. We have been established, we have been told to establish salah, so were they. But what did they do to it? You can see the Nasara now, they don't pray at all. Not even on Sundays. When you qimu salah, they left it. When you to zakah, they left it, give the zakah. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيْمَةِ this is the upright religion that has always existed, but they messed it up. So here the author is saying here, فَجَعَلَ عِبَادُ, عبادة اللَّهِ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah has made worship of him wa ikhlas al-qalb having sincerity in your heart wa iqam salah establishing the salah ita zakah making sure that you give the zakah kulluhu min al-deen all of this is from the religion so now here action inside ikhlas action upon your limb uh, the salat giving and maybe even statements sadaqa kulluhu min al-deen all of this is now the religion so nobody can then say okay well i just say la ilaha illallah and that's sufficient here the author is saying here the aqidah of ahl sunnah from the time of the salaf is that all three are connected what you do internally and externally also we have a hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says al-iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'bah iman consists of something of 70 odd branches a'laha the highest of it shahadatu an la ilaha illallah the highest level of iman is the testimony of la ilaha illallah wa adnaha and the lowest of it imam imatatul adha an at-tariq is to remove something harmful from the path where is the point of evidence here from the author iman the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying here iman consists of 70 odd branches so the trunk here, if you think of it, the asl, the foundation, is iman. And there are 70 odd branches of it. The highest of it is a statement, which is la ilaha illallah. And the lowest of it, if you're walking down the path, you see something which is possibly going to be harmful. You don't want people to be hurt, so you move it. You remove it. You make sure that people are not going to be harmed. You do that sincerely for the sake of Allah, which is an action now. This is a sign of Iman. Therefore, in this hadith, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has connected Iman with beliefs, actions, and statements. The author then goes on. Iman. So he has made actions and statements part of Iman. And this is based on the statement of Allah, also Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, ayah number 124. Iman. Uh, and also. In Surah al fatah as we have seen, لِيَزْدَادُ إِيمَانَ مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ We also have another hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, يَخْرُجُ مِنَ النَّارِ مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَفِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالَ بُرَّةِ أو خَرْدَ أو ذَرَّ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ Everyone will be removed from the fire. No one will stay in the fire for eternity. For everyone who says La ilaha illallah fi qalbi, he, he says it inside of his heart, he believes in it, put it that way. Mithqala burratin, o kardalatin, o dharratin min iman. Proof here to say that iman is something that a person has inside, but as Sheikh Muhammad is saying here, and this is also again from the understanding of Ahl Sunnah, is that. Nobody can say from this man qala, he says la ilaha illallah, that's it sufficient, he's going to go to Jannah based on his hadith. No, la ilaha illallah has conditions. And from those conditions are beliefs and statements and actions. If a person was to take this hadith and it's apparent, then the munafiqun would be the people of Jannah. Because they say la ilaha illallah. Don't they? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are darq al-asfari min al They're going to be in the lowest uh, level of the hellfire. Why is that the case? Because they said la ilaha illallah, but they didn't come with the conditions and the statements. Therefore, this eradicates the view of the Qulnabi who say that uh, it is sufficient of iman for a person to have an external show of it. Then the author goes on. Now, I just want to try and complete this next bit here. It is a little bit lengthy, but we'll try and summarize it. Uh, next week, and I apologize for the disruption this week. Tomorrow I've got another appointment, so I won't be able to make the Saturday session for Asr. So we did it today. Next week we're going to be looking at Hukuk Nabi wa Ashabi. When you say Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Abduhu wa Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what are the rights of that particular testimony? The completion of the foundation of your Islam. That's the next chapter. He is going to be talking about the rights of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam over us, and included in that, and this is something which is really important, and you will find the books of Ahl Sunnah full of, and the books of Ahl Bid'ah full of also, is respect for the companions. There is no book in Aqidah 
that mentions the hukuk of the Messenger of Allah so the rights of the Messenger of Allah so except that they will mention his wives and his companions radiallahu anhum ajma'in and the books of Ahl sunnah talk about the rights of uh, these illustrious companions and they talk about kufr if a person was not to give them their hukuk and now you can understand how deviant sects have gone away far astray when it comes to them saying, yes, we believe Muhammad is the messenger, but when it comes to the companions, you will find them saying the most vile of things. The Khawarij, especially the Nasibiyah from the Khawarij, they make takfir upon the companions, as well as do the Rawafid. Therefore, that's the next session. And then the session after that is the relationship of Ahl Sunnah with Ahl Bid'ah. The author talks about how the relationship should be and that also includes with uh, Ahl Sunnah believing that, and this is the issue of Aqeedah now, that they must make ittiba' of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and that taqlid is haram. And that, inshallah, will complete for us the book in Ramadan. After Ramadan, we can start something new. But if we can hopefully go through what we've got through here, the author then goes on to talking about. So now we have established that Iman, statements, actions, and beliefs. Now the author gives us examples of things that we should have iman in. وَيَجِبُ iman بِكُلِّ مَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ نَبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is wajib and obligatory upon you to believe everything that he has informed you. وَسَحَّ بِهِ النَّقَلْ أَنْ And anything which has come to, him, come to us from him authentically narrated. فِيمَا شَاهَدْنَاهُ أَغَامَ أَنْ Anything that we can witness or anything which is unseen. Now what he is saying here, now this is connected to what we've got before. We have just said now, your iman increases with acts of obedience. Your iman also increases with what he has just said here right now. Is that when you learn the religion of Allah, this feeds into your aqidah and your iman. Fi ma shahadna aghaban. It could be something which is practical, something that you can see, something that the Messenger of Allah told you to do, and you can do it, and you can, there's no harm in you accepting it. Or it could be something that we are not aware of, something from the unseen. All of this increases the person in Iman. So the more you study and the more you learn of what the Messenger taught us and came with, this will increase the person in Iman. And the more you are devoid of this, a person's actions and his statements and his internal thoughts will decrease because of the fact that he is not renewing knowledge. And this is very important because there are so many deviant sects who have denied what the Messenger of Allah came with. Although they say externally, yes, he is the Messenger of Allah and anything he says we will follow. But in actuality, in the aqidah, they reject it. نَعْلَمُ أَنَّا نَعْنَمْ أَنَّهُ حَقُّ وَصِدْقُ Anything that he has come with, we know that it is the truth and it is truthful. سَوَاءٌ فِي ذَلِكْ مَا أَقْلْنَاهُ وَجَهِلْنَاهُ Whether that is something that we can understand it or something that we probably cannot understand, we will accept it from him صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَلَمْ نَتْلَعْ even if we do not understand the reality of what he has taught us, we accept it from him because he is the one that has told us. And we have examples here when he talks about the unseen, but it's important that we just understand what he is saying right now. Then he gives the example actually now, the next sentence. For example, the Isra and Miraj. Now this is important now. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, as the author is saying here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him whilst he was awake, la manaman, he wasn't asleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him in his body and his soul and he went to Jannah. And he saw what he saw in Jannah. And he kept ascending until he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated upon him and the ummah five daily prayers. And then on his way down, he saw the punishment of the people in the fire, and he saw the punishment of the people in the barzakh, and he saw things in Jannah as well on his way down, sallallahu alayhi wa Right, this is now something from the unseen. 
if you believe in what he has told you and you study it and you understand it and you act upon it, your iman will go up. If you can understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from Makkah, took him to Jerusalem and then took him to the seventh heaven to obligate upon him a salat five times a day, your iman will go up. And that will then have an impact on your limbs, on your statements, on your actions, on the fact that you will then establish the salat. If people are weak in their iman, even if you were to inform them of the fact that this has happened, it might not actually affect them that much. They might pray sometimes, they might not pray at all. So now we can see that there is a relationship between iman and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. But he is saying here now, the Shaykh, rahimahullah, وَكَانَ يَقَذَةٌ لَا مَنَامٍ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was awake and he wasn't asleep. Why is he saying that? Because there are groups from the Mu'tazila and others from deviant sects, they say that it is not possible, I'm sorry, he did not go from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night. And then all the way to Jannah, no, no, this is not possible. So there are deviant sects, even though the Messenger of Allah, about himself, he said, this is what I did, this is what happened to me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what I saw, they said, no, no. And you can see here, why the author is saying what he's saying, which is important. But now he actually refutes them. For in Quraysh, Ankaratu, they rejected him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the fact that he actually went. Walam tunkirun manamat. They did not reject the fact that he, it is possible for him to see it in his dream. Therefore, even the Quraysh understood the fact that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told this Muslim Ummah about something of the unseen and they rejected it. Therefore, from the things that we have Iman in and will help you increase in your Iman, an example of that is the Isra Miraj. Another example, وَمِنْ ذَلِكْ Another example, أَنَّ الْمَلَكَ الْمَوْتِ لَمَّا جَاءَ إِلَى مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ لِيَقْبِدَ الرُوحَةِ Musa alayhi salam had the angel of death come to him. And this is a hadith of Sahih Bukhari. Musa alayhi salam latama. Fafaqa'a aynahi. He hit him and the angel of death's eye fell out. Faraja ila rabbih. So the angel of death went back to its lord and he said, uh, you told me to take the soul of Musa. But this is what happened. Faradda alayhi ayn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then returned his, his eye back to him. Like I said, this is a hadith which is lengthy and it's been narrated in more than one source. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad is saying here that it's in uh, Sahih and Bukhari and other places as well. But here, again, now look, the angel of death is going to come to you. Wouldn't that increase you in Iman? He came to Musa alayhi salam. So now, having belief in those things will increase a person in his iman and it will be an impact on his actions and his statements and uh, what he believes in internally. وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ أَشْرَاتِ السَّاعَةِ And the things that the Messenger of Allah told us to believe in, that we must believe in, are the signs of the Day of Judgment. Now the explanation from Sheikh Muhammad is lengthy and I don't think we need to go into all of the details because some of them are very common knowledge. But he says here now, for example, uh, from the things that we must believe in, مثل خروج الدجال, that the Dajjal is going to come. Very briefly, Sheikh Muhammad explains that the Dajjal is linguistically سِيغَةُ مُبَالَغَ مِنَ الدَّجَل Meaning, a Dajjal means to be an imposter or to lie. A Dajjal سِيغَةُ مُبَالَغَ Meaning that this person is a really, really bad imposter, as in a really dangerous Imposter. We have a hadith which has been reported in narrations which are sahih. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, "Annahu yakhruj min tariq bain al-Sham wal Iraq." He will come from a land which is between Sham, which is modern-day Syria and Jordan, Palestine, and Iraq, somewhere from that region. Fayyad al-Nas ila ibadatih. He will call people to worship him. And most of the people that will follow him, Al-Yahud, Wal-Nisa, Wal-A'rab. 
فأكثر ما يتبع اليهود والنساء والعرب. He said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, most of the people that will follow him are the Yahud, are women, and the Bedouins." And then the hadith goes on. So now the Sheikh is saying here things that we must believe in when it comes to the Dajjal is that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, told us about certain things the Dajjal when we learn these things when we uh, accept them from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, increases the person Iman when Uzul Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam is going to come back and this is based on the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ Surah Nisa, ayah number 159 There is no one from Ahl Kitab except that they will believe in Isa alayhi salam before he dies meaning before Isa alayhi salam dies meaning that he's going to come back and from the things that Isa alayhi salam is going to do is that he's going to kill the Dajjal وَخُرُوج يَجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ يَجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ are two tribes that will come out and there is a long hadith which is in Muslim which explains everything that is going to happen or gives a summary of what's going to happen the messenger of Allah وسلم, said that the Dajjal will come and when Isa السلام, descends in Damascus he will flee Dajjal he will run away from Isa ibn Maryam Isa ibn Maryam السلام, will chase the Dajjal and he will lift his hands and he says, sallallahu alayhi, he said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, about Isa, is that when the Dajjal sees Isa, he will dissolve just like salt dissolves into water. And that will be the end of the Dajjal. What happens to his army? The Muslim army will overcome the army of the Dajjal to the extent that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said that there will be trees and stones. They will talk on that day and they will say, Ta'ala, Abdullah, come here, O servant of Allah, or Muslim, there is a Yahudi behind me, or there is a person from the army of Dajjal behind me, come and fight him. This is the end of the fitna of Dajjal. Now here, I just want to pause. There's a lot of things that are happening in the news, there are a lot of things that are happening in the world that we can see today, and even the kuffar admit that things are actually getting worse, and they don't have a solution. And the Muslim is going to be affected by that, whether it's in this country or any other country. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, that the Dajjal will have forerunners. There are certain things that people are going to put in place before the Dajjal, in order for the Dajjal. They are part of his army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best if these are the things that we are witnessing. But it is going to happen. How do we know it's going to happen? As the author is saying here, he told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we believe in it. Now, when we have that, what does that do? That it increases a believer in Iman and increases him in preparation for those things that he doesn't know. As the author is saying here, there are certain things that he told us to do, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he informed us. We can implement them. And as soon as you implement them, you can understand that there is barakah and there is goodness in it. But there are certain things that he told us from the unseen that we don't know. And there are certain things which affect us and go into affect us in our life that we don't know. What is the solution? The solution is to go back to what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has told us. The Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out. Now this is again going back to the Hadith. So what happens after Isa has, through the permission of Allah, destroyed the Dajjal? The Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out. And they will spread fitna everywhere on earth. Corruption absolutely everywhere. Isa a.s. with the believers, he will take the believers and they will seclude themselves in the mountains. They will seclude themselves in the mountains. Until Isa will continue supplicating to Allah, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon them death and then they will be removed. These are also from the major signs of the Day of Judgment. Then the author says, وَخُرُجُ الدَّابَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Naman, Chapter number 26, ayah number 82. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلَ عَلَيْهِمْ When the command comes upon them, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that this sign will take place. أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَةً مِنْ أَرْضٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a beast that will come from the earth to كَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسُ كَانُوا بِعَيَاتِ أَنَّ النَّاسُ كَانُوا بِعَيَاتِنَا لَا يُمْكِنُونَ He will speak to them. 
And these are ayats that mankind do not have any kind of yaqeen or certainty in. Again, proof, exact proof for what the author is saying here. Most of mankind have no aqeel. Therefore, la yuqinun. But for the people of iman, the people who can then be seen in their actions and their statements, and in the internal, they have yaqeen in it. The daba will come out, and the shaykh goes into talking about uh, this beast, and the purpose of this beast is that it will mark believers from disbelievers. It will mark believers from disbelievers. Now we're getting very close to the establishment of the hour. And then the sun will raise from the west. And when that happens, لم تكن آمنت من قبل وكسبت في إيمانها خيرا لا ينفع نفسا إيمانها لم تكن آمنت من قبل وكسبت في إيمانها خيرا If a person has no iman, if a person has not made tawbah, if a person has not gone back to Allah, when the sun raises from the west, and now it's already been stamped that he is a believer or disbeliever, خلاص, that's it. And then the trumpet will be blown, that's the next thing that he's going to talk about. وأشباه وأشباه ذلك مما سحى به النقل And there are many other things that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that we must have aqeedah in and belief in, uh, which are authentically narrated to him. Then he moves on. These are from the establishment of the hour. But there are other things as well that a person must have belief in, which will impact his iman and help him become more practicing. وَعَذَابُ الْقَبْرِ وَنَعِيمَهُ حَقٍّ The punishment of the grave and its uh, bliss is true. Because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to seek refuge in it. And he commanded his companions to do this in every single salat. And these are the four things, or from the four things that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to habitually seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, and he taught his companions and he commanded them to do so as well. Allahumma inni awdhubika min adhab al qabr before he makes the taslim. وَفِتْنَةُ الْقَبْرِ حَقْ And being tested in the grave is also true. So now when a believer knows that this is going to happen, when a believer knows that this is the end of time, and then after when he goes back, whether he sees the end of time or not, but he's going to be placed in his grave, and he's going to be questioned, that will increase him in his iman, it will increase him in preparation. وَسَوَالْ مُنْكَرْ وَنَكِيرْ حَقْ These two angels, their names are Munkar and Nakir, and they will come. And they will ask him the three, the three famous questions. Man Rabbuk, Adinuk, or Man Nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your Prophet? And if he had aqeedah, and qawl and amal, and he acted upon it, what's he going to say? Rabbi Allah. My Lord is Allah. And my religion is Islam, Deen Islam. And this is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi As for the kafir or the munafiq, the person who has no aqeedah and no iman, they will say, ah, ah, I don't know. I had people say something, so I said the same thing as them. Resurrection after death is true. And again, how many times do you find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connecting belief in Allah with Yawm al-Akhir? So many times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions belief in Allah, that is if you believe in Allah and you believe in the last day. This is because, as Sheikh Muhammad is saying, is that belief in Allah in the unseen instills in the, in the, in the believer preparation for standing in front of him. Increase of iman. وَذَٰلِكَ هِينَ يَنْفَقُوا إِسْرَافِيلُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فِي السُّورِ And that is the day when Israfil a name of an angel that we know, he will blow into the trumpet. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنُ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ They will come out of their graves and they will come pouring forth. Then the author talks about the unseen some more. So he says, وَيَحْشَرُ النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ هُفَاتٌ أُرَاتٌ غُرًّا بِهِمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect them naked, uncircumcised, and barefooted. And they will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah. Also from the things that we must believe in and helps us to establish our iman 
is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa will intercede on behalf of his Ummah Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept his intercession for some of those who he intercedes for. Then the author says, Rahimahullah, that the scales are true. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will weigh our deeds on the scales. And he will judge, with, uh, he will judge upon his creation. And then every single one of us will be given their deeds or their record of deeds, either in the right hand or on the, re- on the, re- on the left hand. Either on the right hand or on the left hand. Now again, aqidah, iman, instills in the believer action and practice and the increase of his iman. So those who get their book in the right hand, who doesn't want to be from them? For so for you have sabah hisabah yasira. For them, standing in front of Allah will be easy. They'll be given their book in the right hand and they'll be told to go. And then when they go, they will go back to the family and they'll be happy. Now some of the ulama have said that there are three categories of receiving the book. Either in the right hand, or on the left hand, or behind your back. And this is what this ayah is saying here. But what seems to be the correct view, and this is what the author is saying here, is either in the right hand or the left hand. Now some people will get their book in the left hand, but behind their back. Why behind their back? Because it is that shameful. وَرَاءَ ذَهْرِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوا ثُبُورًا And he will be calling upon himself destruction. What have I done? Why did I do it? وَيَسْلَى سَعِيرًا For this person, the Sa'ir, the Hellfire. May Allah protect us. So in this now you can see that there is Iman. And as the author is saying here, when you believe in what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us to believe in, it increases the person in that. Then the author says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be given hawd fi qiyamah. He'll be given a pool for us to drink from, the believers, may Allah make us of them to drink from. Ma hu ashaddu bayadun min al Its water is whiter than milk, wa ahla min al asal, and it is sweeter than honey. And its, drink, its cups and its vessels, adadun nujum sama, is more than the stars in the sky. Man shariba minhu sharwa, anyone who drinks from it, they will never be thirsty ever again. He taught us about this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something that we must have iman in. And when a person has iman in it, he prepares for it, and his preparation will increase him in iman. Think about that for a minute. You want to be from those people who will be protected from the Dajjal. You want to be from those people who have safety from the Ajuj and Ma'juj. You want to be from the people as the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is telling us here that the world is going to be split into Iman and non-Iman. Soon, if it hasn't happened already, the world will be split into those who follow the Dajjal and those who don't follow the Dajjal. There will be no real in-between. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, has told us that there's going to be a resurrection. You're going to go back with Allah with nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you a book of deeds in the right hand or in the left hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to weigh your scales, weigh your deeds on the scales. And there are some people who will be happy and rejoicing in front of all of mankind. All of mankind are going to be gathered there and there will be a person or there will be a group of people who will take their book in their right hand and they will be rejoicing in front of everyone else while they are looking on. How can you have that security for yourself except through learning and having iman? This is the point that he is making here. How can you drink from the whole of the Messenger of Allah with the description that we have just had by just saying, yeah, I believe in La ilaha illallah, that's sufficient. Allah will judge me. I'll take my chances. It's not sufficient. This is what he is saying and this is not the aqeed of the Muslim anyway. It's not the aqeed of the companions. And it's not aqeed of the four imam for a person to say that. Therefore, in order for you to be upon Islam and not spoil it, like what we have seen from the ayah in Surah Bayna, from the people of the book before, is that you must stick to Iman in statement, qawlun wal amun wa itiqadun, in your actions and your statements and in your beliefs. Otherwise, you will just end up resembling them and then you will not have the security like they won't have on the Day of Judgment or even before that. Wassiratu haq. The bridge is real. 
And he says, the abrar, the pious ones, yajuz, they will go and they will go past it. وَيَنزِلُ عَنْهُ الْفِجَّارِ And the ones who were not so good in the life of this dunya, and they had bad deeds, they will try to go over it, but they will not be able to go over it. And because of time, I'm skipping through a lot of what Sheikh Muhammad is saying. But again, I think a lot of it is common knowledge. So now he goes on to say, giving us a description about the Sirat. Number one, there is no one except that they will have to cross it. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا In Surah Maryam, Ayah number 71, chapter number 19. Every single one of us will have to go over it. So now this now again feeds into your Iman, feeds into your preparation, and it should have an impact on your actions and your statements and in your beliefs. But also the description of this bridge, it's thinner than a strand of hair, and it is sharper than a sword, and it has got the thorns like of Sa'dan, which kal, and we also know that it is going to be hot. And there are other narrations that the author has not mentioned. And there is a narration which is in Hakim, which is, I would like to share right now because it's a very uh, concerning narration for the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Sirat. It's the hadith of Hakim, is made Sahih by Shaykh al He created the Sirat. And when the angels, they saw it, they said to Allah, who is going to cross this bridge? How is it possible that anyone is going to cross this bridge? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels that he will choose from his servants and he will facilitate for his servants whoever he wants. And when the angels, they saw this, they saw this for themselves as being something which is impossible. Crossing a bridge like this, over the hellfire, with that kind of a description, the angels, they've seen it. And they said, this, that's an angel, imagine a human being. The author then says, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will intercede on the Day of Judgment for those people who have entered into the fire. Min ummatih, min ahlil kabair. They have done major sins, they died without making tawbah, they will enter into the fire. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will intercede. فَيَخْرُجُونَ بِشَفَاعَتِهِ They will leave the hellfire because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will accept his dua and his intercession for those people. But these people, now again, you have the person who says, I'll take my chances. Look at this. The author is saying here, these people will be burnt and there will be nothing left of them. Absolutely, just burnt down to the core. فَيَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ بِشَفَاعَةِ They will enter into his jannah and there are other narrations that <coughs> Shaykh Muhammad is explaining to us that they will then enter into something which is known as Nahr al the river of life. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that when they enter into that river, their body will grow again just like a seed grows in spring. So imagine if you look at a seed growing up, you know, growing in, in, in spring and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it come out and makes it look beautiful and the greenery etc and then it you know, brings vegetation and produce or it might become a beautiful flower this is the example that the messenger of Allah sallam, has given for those people who have entered into the fire yes they are the people of Tawheed but do you want to take your chances? your iman should prevent you from that but there are some people, because of their tawheed and la ilaha illallah, and they had the conditions fulfilled of la ilaha illallah, despite having some sins, they will be taken out of the fire. And the Messenger of Allah said they will be placed into a river in Jannah, which is known as the river of life, and their body will form again. And you can imagine, you can see that in front of your eyes. This is something, you know, that we can have some kind of example of in the life of this dunya. The author then says, the Anbiya and the believers, the prophets and the believers and the angels, they will all intercede. And the intercession will be accepted and some of the intercession will not be accepted. So he says in the next point, وَلَا تَنْفَعُ الْكَافِرُ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِئِينَ Therefore, in the books of Ahlul Sunnah, some shafa'a is accepted and some shafa'a is rejected. And this is very important because we are living in a time where people, they go to graves and they go to other places and... 
I don't know, they have amulets and all these different things for the sake of getting closer to Allah. The author is saying here, this is now some uh, eight, nine hundred years ago, some intercession will be accepted and some is just going to be rejected. So those people who are worshipping besides Allah, deities, thinking that they are getting closer to Allah, thinking that they are going to be saved, it's not going to benefit them. وَلَا تَنْفَعُ كُفَّارُ شَفَعْتُ الشَّافِعِينَ now a person will say, well, this is referring to the kuffar. He says, la ilaha illallah. No, no, no. As Shaykh Muhammad is saying here, and the author is actually saying from Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, ayah number 28, wala yashfa'una illa liman irtada. Nobody will be interceded for or have the intercession accepted, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and allows it. وَهُمْ مِنْ خَشْيَتِهِ مُشْفِقُونَ Tawheed. <coughs> Tawheed. Uh, these are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow intercession for or intercession of, meaning from, meaning the anbiya and the believers and the malaika and the angels. They are the ones who have a level of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are the ones that will be accepted. Therefore, Part of your now iman is to understand that on the day of judgment there's going to be a dua from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There's going to be a dua from the Prophets, all of them, from the angels and the believers And there are going to be people who are not going to be accepted in, into that dua Your iman now in the life of this dunya, whilst you've got a chance, should increase Internally thinking Oh Allah, make me of those people who will be with the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, And that should have an effect on your actions and your statements. This is the last point that the author is making. Jannah and Jahannam exist. They are created and they will exist for eternity and they will not cease to exist. Now this is important because you have, I mean, this happened a few weeks back. There was a brother, he had a question after the class. And he said, will the people of Jannah get bored? Ajib question. Where did you get this question from? He goes, I was listening to a lecture in a masjid in Leicester. In Leicester. Don't think that this is far away in some abstract place. In Leicester. And the person, the Mulana, the Sheikh, whoever it was, he said, the people of Jannah will eventually get bored and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do away with everything. Completely contradicting the aqeed of Ahl sunnah Well, Jannah and Nar makhlukatan, they are created, they exist, la tanfiyan, they will not cease to exist. La yabguna anha hiwala. They will be in Jannah, they will not want for it to be replaced at all. The person is contradicting the Qur'an in its wording. They will be in Jannah, they will be so happy, they will not want it to end. So how can this person then say they will get bored? What is the aqeedah? The aqeedah is now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-awwal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-akhir. If Allah is al-akhir, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite, how can Jannah and Jahannam and inhabitants of Jannah and Jahannam khalidina fiha abada be infinite also? Kalam. They start thinking. They start drinking the coffee. They start looking at what the Greeks said and what the Romans said. And then they divert away from what Sheikh Muhammad has said. Now, Sheikh Muhammad in the beginning of this, he actually says something which is really important, which we went over. He says these are known as the Sam'iyat. The Sam'iyat are those texts that come to you which are objective. There is no two ways about it. This is the haqq. It is from the kitab and it is from the sahih sunnah. You have to accept it. And he uses as proof, inna arsalnaka bil haqq. We have sent you with the truth. Bashiran wa nadira. We have sent you with information which is good and we have sent you with a, a warning. Wala tusallana sallam jaheem. The point here, the author, uh, Sheikh Muhammad is saying here, uh, uh, the commentator, he is saying that these are from the Sam'iyat. You can't contradict these. This is from your Aqeelah. This will now increase you in your Iman. The more you learn of it, the more you have a relationship with it. So this person completely contradicted what is found in Surah Kaf. They will get bored. 
And because they are bored from the rahmah of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put an end to them. And he will put an end to the hellfire and he will put an end to Jahannam and Jannah as well. That way we have now an answer that Allah is al-akhir and then he will go back to being infinite and by himself. Problem solved for them. But why did they get into that in the first place? There is an answer, but we don't want to go into that anyway right now. The author is saying here, now this is why he is saying, La tanfiyan, Jannah, Jahannam will not come to an end. It's, in its, its inhabitants will not come to an end. For Jannah to ma'wa, li awliya'ih. Jannah, the highest station of Jannah. Now Shaykh Muhammad is saying here, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Jannah to ma'wa? Ma'wa refers to something which is elevated. Therefore Jannah, in its place, is elevated. How? Allah knows best. But Jannah is high. Jannah is above us. These are for his awliya. These are for the people who had belief in Allah and they followed him. Allah inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun alladhina amanu wa kanat. They believed in Allah and they had taqwa. These are the awliya. Therefore, if you have any kind of iman and any kind of taqwa, whether it's high or low, you are included in this ayah. There is a misconception where people say that the awliya are the people who are on a religious pedestal. That is not the case. Every single one of us who have iman and taqwa, you are from the awliya. Now, if you are from the awliya, you are going to enter into jannah. But not everybody's grade is going to be the same. Therefore, work on your iman. Attach yourself with what the author is saying here. Rectify and purify and reform. Increase in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannatul ma'wa will be for you, the highest of firdos. May Allah make us of them. وَالنَّارِ iqab li'a'da'ih The fire is a punishment for his enemies. Iman now, here, again. وَأَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ ومخلدون, he says, and people of Jannah as well as the people of fire will be in there for eternity. In al Mujrimin fi Adab Jahannam Khalidun Surah Zukhruf, Ayah number seventy four, Ayah number seventy five. Surely the Mujrimin, meaning the people who had bad deeds, and from the heads of them, the people of Shirk. Fi Adab Jahannam Khalidun Samiyat, objective information, knowledge from Allah that they will be into the hellfire for eternity. لا يفتر عنهم وهم فيه مبلسون. Nothing will be taken them from out of it, and it will surround them from all sides. May Allah protect us. وَيُؤْتَى الْمَوْتِ and this is the last thing here. وَيُؤْتَى الْمَوْتِ death will come. So now, when people have settled in Jannah, and when people have settled in the hellfire, this actually contradicts, I mean, sorry, refutes, not contradicts. The person has contradicted this. And this is a hadith in Bukhari. After everyone has settled, the people in Jannah in Jannah, and the people in the fire in the fire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring death in the shape of a ram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out. Now again, this is from the unseen. He told us and it is true for A person will say, how can death look like ram? Why did he choose a ram? Why didn't he have something else? That this is from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the people of Iman, this is sufficient. For the people of Iman, this is an increase. For the people of Iman, this is part of their preparation. This is servitude. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call death. And death will come in the shape of a ram. And he will call out to the people of Jannah. What is this? They will say, this is death. They will recognize that this is death. Even though... In the example that we've got, it's a ram. And the people of the fire will be asked the same question. Oh, people of fire, what is this? They will say, this is death. Now the people of fire, they will start getting a little bit happy. Something is happening. Maybe our situation is going to change. We're going to be taking up the fire. For yuthbah bain al jannati wa nar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will slaughter this ram between jannah and Jahannam, so that everybody can see it. And then he will call out, Ya Ahlul Jannah, khuludun wala maut. That's it. Death doesn't exist anymore. You've seen it being sacrificed in front of you. 
Imagine being in a land where death doesn't exist. What does that mean? You, it means you have secured for yourself from the mercy of Allah His pleasure and His mercy and His reward for eternity. It means you are not going to be taken away from it. It means a sick class, you are guaranteed to stay in that state forever. وَأَهْلُ النَّارِ O people of the fire خُلُودٌ وَلَا مَوْتٌ Imagine that now. This person, he thinks he's, something is going to happen. He thinks his fortune is going to change, even though fortune is not the right word, but he thinks that his decree might change now. He sees death being slaughtered in front of him. That's it. Sealed in the hellfire for eternity. Handcuffs, chains, fire, calling out and nobody's there, isolation, darkness, no food, no drink, no companionship, no friends, no family, just by for eternity. May Allah protect us. Hence the author is saying here, Iman, or those things that you believe in, that then has a show on tongue and the actions. This is Iman also. How do you increase? You increase by doing what he has told you to do, whether that is something that you can see or whether that is something from the unseen. The more you're doing that, the more your iman will grow and the stronger you will be as a mu'min. But the more you turn away from what he came with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then your iman will decrease. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us the people of Iman in the dunya and in the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects us from all forms of fitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes our best statement the last one, our best action the last one, and our best day the last day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he completes for us our Iman, that he forgives us for our mistakes. Allahumma atmim lana nurana wa gfir lana dhulubana inna ka la kulli shayin kulli you are able to do all things. Hada wa Allahu a'ala wa sallallahumma ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Next Saturday, inshallah, we return back to Saturdays after Salat al-Asr. Hukuk al-Nabi wa ashabah. The rights of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Subhanahu Allahumma wa bihamdik shalala ala 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 ala